Hi there, Johnny here from johnnylipsomstudios.co.uk and welcome to Studio One Seven Point One. So in Studio One version 7.1, we now have a new instrument, which is available at, this is it here, it's called Cinematic Lights, and it's available from the Instrument tab here. Now, small caveat, it does not automatically appear. You will have to install it from the Studio One installation wizard, all right? So if you don't know what that is, you go to Studio One, Studio One installation, I have it here in install content, but it will be available for you in available downloads. So you would click on here and just type Cine, and then it will show up like this. You won't see this one because this is um, a third party product that I have. So it should show up as just cinematic lights here, and then you'll see this arrow. You click on this arrow, and you need to make sure that when you check this box, these two boxes are also checked. And then instead of saying activate like it does here, because I'm looking in the install content box, um, it should say uh, install. And then you just click on that button there and then it will install. And then you will need to restart Studio One. It will say so at the top here. It'll say you need to restart Studio One and there'll be a, a button there that says restart. And you just click that and Studio One will restart by itself. And then when you open the instrument tab in a new song, you should see the cinematic lights there installed. And then this is what it looks like. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so what you actually get is when you've in, if you have installed the, um, the content correctly, the sound set, you'll get all of these folders here. Now the theme for cinematic lights is that it has a bit of a hybrid a bit of an orchestral kind of sound to it. So you'll find that there's some orchestral uh, sounds and then there's some um, hybrid sounds, then there's some arpeggiated and then some repeated sounds here. And then you've got some um, effects, um, special effects sounds here. So all of these are really quite good, really quite useful. Um, the one that I have at the moment is the staccato family. So you get nice short sounds. And as you can hear, you've got kind of like some strings kind of going on. So they're all kind of short notes. And as per the other instruments, such as Deep Flight 1 and Lead Architect, you also get the global effects for arpeggiating and repeater and all of that. And of course, you can adjust the overall volume with this slider here. And like the other ones, you can also adjust uh, the sample shift, the cutoff, and the attack and release. And as you can see, we've got strings, we've got brass, and we've got woodwinds. So depending upon... So much higher up, you can hear flutes and piccolos and things. And down the bottom there, you can hear um, the basses, and I think there's a euphonium or a tuba down there as well. But you can um, you can change the balance. And there's our tuba. And if we go over this way. We got some clarinets and we got some flutes in there. So if you just want staccato flutes and uh, clarinets, and you want to do your your best John Williams impersonation, then you can do that there. Um, but like I said, there's. Um, a lot of different sounds here. So this one is a bit more brass orientated. The other thing to note, which you just heard, if you apply any weight to any of the keys, 
it plays with the pitch. So if you want just a regular straight sound, press the keys nice and softly. And as I said, you can um, you can adjust the balance of these depending upon what you want. All right, so that gives you just a little bit of a flavor of the orchestral sounds. Let's have a look at some of these um, these ones. I'm just picking these at random. All right, so you've got some different sounds here, different sustained ones, and then you've got some gated ones, like this one here. So lots of fun to be had um, with this particular instrument. It can be very, very entertaining. Uh, and you could blend this or combine this with the Lead Architect or the Deep Flight 1 uh, using the combined instrument um, setup. Basically, just drag and drop one of these two on top of it, and then you can combine the two instruments and find um, unique sounds that you might want to create. All right, so that is Cinematic Lights. Go and have some fun with it. In Impact itself, we have um, a very cool little change, which if you are using um, loops in Impact, like I have here, I've just got a drum loop, which um, I've put on this pad here. But if you are using loops like this one and you have it in uh, the trigger mode set to loop, um, what could happen previously is that you might have a pop or a click or um, some kind of unpleasant artifact that you get when it loops around from the end of the loop back to the beginning again. Well, now you have this ability to enter a crossfade value. So if you see here, there's this little X button here. It's not really a button. But next to it, there is this value here that I have entered. Now, you can set a crossfade value of between 0 and 1,000 samples. And that basically is the, uh, basically the width of the crossfade. So 50 samples, not very big. Um, but you could have it up to 1,000 samples if you need it to. So basically, just play your loop and then listen and adjust this as necessary. So what you'll find now, if I play this loop all the way through and let it loop back round, what you'll find is that uh, you don't hear the join between the end of the, the loop and the beginning of the next pass. So check this out. I'm playing the wrong thing. Hang on a second. And so you notice there, when you get to the end of the drum fill and back around to the very beginning with the crash symbol, you don't hear the join. So this is very, very handy if you have, for example, a drum loop or 
any other loop, like a, a, um, a strumming guitar pattern or something like that, that you are triggering as a loop and you want to keep it going for several measures, this little thing is going to be very, very useful for you. Just set this value, have a listen. In this case, 50 seemed to work best, so I, that's what I set it for. But it could be any value that you need it to be, depending upon um, what you're using. So if you are using something that requires a bit more of a crossfade, then you can just change this value here. I think this is a very nice little um, addition to impact, a nice little improvement. It's, it just adds a little bit of finesse to impact. So in the note editor, when you are using impact, as we are here, remember that um, in version 7.0, um, the addition of this guy here, the pad controls for impact was added so that you can basically see um, the individual parts of your drum track um, without actually having to open impact itself. Well, we've now added this button here, which allows you to open and, and toggle between this uh, part of impact and the pitch and filter and amp envelopes here. So you can now toggle between these two by clicking on this button here, which means you don't have to open impact in order to be able to adjust these values uh, anymore. You can basically just have this section and this section all available just from clicking one little button there. I think this is a very, very useful, albeit very small little um, addition to the in um, the in editor impact. I think this is very, very cool. Um, that uh, I think will make it a lot easier and give you maybe less reasons to actually need to have impact itself open um, unless you are wanting to um, more directly change the sounds or clear a pad or um, copy one pad to another pad, for example. Then you would need to have um, impact open, but for the most part, I think with these two, with these controls, with this toggle switch here, it just makes it much easier now to be able to do anything you want to do to your drum track whilst it's playing by being able to switch between this view and the envelopes view. This is very, very cool. So next up, we have this nice little feature added to the note editor. So what you've always been able to do with a selected note is use the up and down arrow keys. To transpose it up and down. Now, this new feature that is introduced here is this. If you hold down the alt or option key and then press your up and down arrows, it will copy the note and move it to wherever you want. This is great if you're wanting to build out a chord. So let's do that. So let's hold down the Alt or Option key. Now we've got a C and an E. So now if I let go of the Alt or Option key and leave it, we've got those two notes. But notice how now the second note, the E, is selected. So if I then press down that Alt key again and then press up, now I've got a G. If I repeat that, I can make this into a major seven by going for the B up at the top. And now we've got ourselves a major seven chord. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to do this once more by adding in another note. So let's let's draw in a note down here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select this note. We're going to press that option. Alt key again. And just like that, we have a G7 chord. All right, so if I back up, let's play this. All right, so there. <laughs> I had to resolve the tension from the G7 chord there. All right, so that is a very cool... Um, little extra feature for being able to transpose and copy and move a note so that you can build chords um, nice and straightforwardly.
um, if you know what notes you want to go for to make a particular chord, this is particularly handy for you. Otherwise, you can just kind of experiment with different intervals um, until you find something that you want. And as you can see here, when I hover, it says G7, and this one says C major 7. So we know what these two chords are. All right, so there you go. Check that one out and have some fun with it. Okay, next up is a, a fantastic new feature. And this is backed by, um, well, it's not backed by, this is added by, that's what I meant to say. This is added by a very, 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 very popular request over a very long time. And that is transforming buses to rendered audio. You can now do this. So I have a whole bunch of drum channels here that just sound like this. And yes, it's a little bit of swing drums um, that are all probably marginally too loud. So let's turn them all down a wee bit. There we go. Okay. I'm not worried about volumes or levels of any of this for this demonstration. So the way this works is I have a drum bus. I have a compressor on this bus. I have all of these drums going to a room reverb and I have a pro EQ after the room reverb. Notice that the room reverb is routed to my drum bus. I will explain that why that is necessary. Because when you transform the bus to rendered audio, it will print all of the inserts that are on here, including the insert on the drum bus itself. But any sends to any effects channels need to be routed directly to the drum bus. Because they, if you want all of that, the reverbs, your inserts, delays, whatever it is, if you want all of those to be printed to the bus, they all have to be routed to the bus. Otherwise, it will not work. Or at least it, it just won't print your reverbs or your delays. If you're happy with not printing your reverbs and delays and just leaving them as they are and printing everything else, then you can certainly do that by not routing your effects channels to your drum bus. But once they are there, the process is just like it is for transforming anything else to rendered audio, um, any other you know audio track in Studio One. It's exactly the same if you were doing it over here on individual channels, except now you're doing it on a bus. So we now right click and we have this new menu option, transform to rendered audio. And notice now everything is gone apart from this drum bus. And it's still labeled drum bus. And notice we have this transformed track icon now instead. And notice how the insert is gone. And so has the send. The send is gone as well. Okay. So everything that was on this is now printed and should sound like this. So we had the reverb, we had the compressor, all doing their thing, printed to the audio track. It's very, very cool. And this is this has been um, a highly requested feature for a long time. And now it is here in Studio One 7.1.